I was 18 at the time, and one day, I decided to go hunting. I had my shotgun and a bag of shells with me. I shot at a few birds and rabbits here and there. I was in the middle of the woods by myself, and I was about to pack it in, when I heard some strange rustling from the bushes. I then caught a glimpse of what I thought was a dogman. It appeared roughly seven feet tall and had a dog-like face with really long hair. It also had a long tail like that of a wolf. I began to panic and I pointed my gun at the creature. I shot at it and it let out a high-pitched scream. I then ran as fast as I could. It didn't chase me until I ran back to my truck though. I got into my truck and started it. Then I drove off. I went home and never told anybody about it. I believe that dogmen are more common than people even realize. I don't know what the dogmen wanted, but I'm terrified and I don't think I will go back to those woods hunting ever again. I knew all about dogmen originally because my uncle has had several encounters with them, so I'm familiar with the concept and what they look like. I never thought though in a million years I would ever run into one myself. I'm glad that I wrote down my encounter. It's nice to know that I'm not the only person in the world that has ever actually seen one. I mean, hell, before this, I thought I would never see one. But I guess I'm wrong. In 1991, I was lucky enough to be able to take a trip to Europe with my parents. I was very young at this time, but I still remember some of the things that had happened. I was staying in a hotel in London, England, and I was in my own room, lying in bed, looking out the window. The window was open. The window was open. I wanted to go to sleep, but I kept hearing a sound outside, a sound that kept drawing my attention. It was a sound that was a mix of a squeal and a gurgle. I remember that it was coming from somewhere in the air over the nearby street. So, I kept looking out the window to try and find a source, and I see a shadow pass over the street. I looked up to see that it was indeed looked like a gargoyle. It was a little over a few feet tall and appeared to have bat-like wings and almost a black beak-shaped like object on its face. It had a long spaded tail. It appeared dark, smoky gray in color and it was flying straight towards me in the window. I remember that it got so close, I could see vivid detail in its face. It had yellow eyes with dark gray, black metal slanted pupils in each eye. It also had dark gray lips and humanistic features. It even had kind of pointed ears like that you would see devils have. It had a mouth that was wide open, revealing several rows of tiny pointed teeth, kind of like how fish have and it was making this awful squeal as it came towards me flying. Now, this was kind of closer to night, so there wasn't a whole lot of light out, but light enough that the buildings were emanating light that I could see this thing. It was going to fly straight towards the glass and come into my room. I remember that I was extremely frightened. I screamed at the top of my voice. It flew right past the window, dodging us. I remember that it was so close to the glass I even saw its reflection. I remember that there was a flash of white light behind it as soon as it followed. I remember that it flew right past the window over the street, over to some other buildings, and finally disappeared. I closed the window so quickly and was so frightened that I cried myself to sleep that night. Of course, my parents were rich, so they had their own room and thought I would benefit at the age of seven of me having my own. So. I was all alone. The next morning, I was still upset and I told my parents about what I had seen and then I told them that I had seen a gargoyle. They found it very odd and they did not believe me. They kept asking me what I was doing out of bed. I told them that I had heard the sound and I saw this thing that I thought was a gargoyle. They told me it was probably a dream but I knew it was not a dream. It was all very real. It happened and I have never been able to forget. In fact, I'm still afraid of gargoyles. I keep using the term gargoyle because I'm not sure what else to call them. It was some demonic humanoid. 
That's all I know how to describe it as, and I remember, even at that age, it scared me badly. One night, when I was in the Navy, back in 1982 or 1983, I was on night watch. I was stationed in the Persian Gulf. On that night, I was standing watch as the quartermaster, and I was on the starboard bridge wing, looking at the horizon. There were about six of us on watch, and the sky was extremely clear. It was a moonless night. The stars were very bright, and the sea was very calm. Up ahead of us, I saw a very bright light rising up out of the sea. It was not a plane. It was very bright. I could not tell if it was the reflection of the moon or a star, but I was so fascinated by this light that I wanted to see where it was coming from. I kept looking and looking and I saw the light get bigger and I could tell it was coming from underneath the water. Some very large object was rising from the water emanating a very low blue colored light. It was then that I noticed it was a round object, maybe about a hundred or so feet in diameter, and it was rising very slowly out of the sea. It was big and very dark in the center, like a black shadow. Only the light of the stars reflected on it, and it itself emitted light, if that makes any sense. I watched it rise from the sea for about 10 or 15 minutes as it slowly ascended into the sky. Did I mention how round it was? And it was so large that I could see it, even when I turned my head. I remember that I was so fascinated, I forgot to even call the captain. I only remember to tell the bridge, watch, standard, to inform the captain when it reached its highest point. I watched it rise up over the horizon. It rose up and then just stopped and disappeared, before hanging out in the air, all the while making a very low, low humming sound. It was about a hundred or so feet up in the sky, out of the sea, before I heard it disappear. I watched for about a few more minutes afterwards, waiting for this thing to appear again in the sky. I was in so much amazement and terrified at the same time, holding on to the platform railing. I could not believe what I was seeing. So I told others, guys, you gotta see this. They came out and stood beside me to watch it. All of us had seen it. I mean, it was so big, how could you have not have seen it? I mean, none of us missed it. I remember talking to everybody afterwards and we were all very quiet. Nobody spoke. It was just hanging there in the air, and then suddenly, when it went away, we were all kind of expecting it to return. But instead, it just disappeared. I remember that it was so fast that none of us could even imagine it would have gone. I was also scared to tell the captain, and scared to sleep for about the next week. But when I finally told the captain, he had told me that, well, there were other ships in the area that thought that it was some kind of secret experimental UFO craft. I didn't buy the explanation. We all believe that we saw a UFO. I mean, I don't know what else to call it. I have no idea what it was. But I am positive that it was not a military craft or a plane of any kind. Here's my story. It happened when I was about four or five. I am now 30. I was living in an apartment complex here in St. Louis. I had an apartment facing a playground, so I would always be out there playing. One night, I was sitting out there and it was now getting pretty dark. I was the only kid out there at the time. And I see this creature come out of the woods. It was human-like, but I remember thinking even at that age it was not a human. It had a beak and was all black and kind of slithered in its movements. It was so tall that it easily was able to leap over the fence into the playground. It walked around, away from me, and I just had the feeling it was looking for somebody, or looking for me. I remember thinking I had to run. So, at four or five, you can imagine how terrified I was when I ran inside and woke up my mom. I told her that I had not just seen a monster outside, but that it was coming for me. I don't remember if I told her what it was or not. Maybe I told her it was a goblin. But I do remember that it scared her. She made me go back out there with her. 
and she told me that there was nothing out there, and that I made her get up for nothing. So, I got scolded for making things up. I remember thinking, though, that it was still there, that it was just hiding, waiting for her to leave so it can come looking for me, and I was still terrified. But after that, I stayed out of that playground for quite a while. The creature looked like some strange mix between a carnivorous bird like a vulture and a human, or something. I just remember thinking at four or five years old how ugly it was, and being at that age, how scared I was. Look, I really don't have an explanation for where it came from or why it exists, but I do believe that this thing is out there still, and there might be more of them. I have to live with this memory now forever, and I am a firm believer in things that are not supposed to exist, but do. I'm a believer because I myself had this experience. In 2000, while driving home from work in Mineral, Idaho, which is about 70 miles southwest of Salt Lake City, I came over the hill just east of Parawuna Pass, going around 10 p.m. at night. Looking south from this point, the road drops suddenly into Bonneville Salt Flats. On the road right below me, there were these six humanoids running down the road shoulder to shoulder. They were all very tall and thin, with long black hair and pointed ears. Each appeared to be wearing tattered robes. They moved quickly. Out of freaked curiosity, I began to slow down and watch them to try and get a better look when I suddenly see one of these things turn and look right at me. And then slowly, all of them very slowly turned and faced me directly. We were still 30 to 50 feet away from each other. Now I'm very creeped out, and so I floored it, made the turn, and never looked back. It was a while before I ever told my son and others about what I saw. And finally, years later, I felt enough courage to share my experience on Facebook. My cousin, who lives 14 miles south of the pass, interviewed her elderly neighbor about werewolves spending time in the area, since they firmly believe that there are werewolf creatures out there. The neighbor said they chased her in the mountains when she was young, killed her friend, stole her family's animals, but never admitted it to the police because the dog befriended one of these creatures who ran off. She said most farmers around there had a greyhound because these creatures were always stalking and looking for more prey. But apparently, these greyhound dogs would keep these creatures at bay. You could still hear them howling some nights. Well, about 30 years prior, while on an evening deer run, I was out with my kids and came across a fresh kill in the sagebrush. This kill was torn into pieces, shredded like cheese. So, either there are some sort of wolf-like creatures walking around, or maybe there's truth to these skinwalker shapeshifter beings out here in the desert. One thing is for sure, you have to be careful out here. It can get very dangerous, and if you are not prepared, well, prepare for bad things to happen. Before I end this email, I'll tell you about one quick encounter I remember one of my family members telling me about, at least that they thought there was a large coyote walking around their house at night. One night, my family member was actually out on her porch and said that the coyote thing was following her and their small dogs. She got scared, ran into the house, and so after wandering around some more, this thing, what she thought was an upright coyote, just ups and leaves. One of our other relatives had hunted in New Mexico for coyotes before and he came and visited with her and said he was very familiar with this kind of evil spirit, and told her he could sense its presence all around her trailer and all over the land they lived on, that this being had purposefully left its mark there to let others know not to come here. Really scary stuff, honestly. When I was 16 years old, I was living in a small town called Mountain View, Arkansas, in a small house that my mother and I had rented. I was up late one night and I was all alone. I was going to bed and I heard a noise coming from the backyard. I went to check it out and saw this black figure walking towards the house from the wood line. It appeared to be about seven feet tall with a long curved beak face and large glowing yellow eyes. 
It had bat-like wings on the back and large talon-like claws. Terrified, I ran back inside, locking the door. I wish I would have had a camera or cell phone to take a picture, but it was like 2004, so I didn't have a cell phone yet. I'm not sure what it was, a demon or a bat creature or what. I think it maybe might have been a demon, maybe a gargoyle, but I'm not sure. This wouldn't be the first time, though, that something strange and I had run in together. I have had many paranormal experiences. The two that stand out the most are just before this sighting occurred. I was still 16 years old at the time, and I was home alone, and I was asleep. I woke up to see a black silhouette figure standing over me. But this figure wasn't an average-sized man. It was about 7 to 8 feet tall, and I would only what I can describe to you as burning red eyes that were filled with hate and malice, like it wanted to torment me and hurt me physically in any way it could. It was just radiating this aura off of it. You know how you can get a sense for good and bad people? Well, this thing was just giving off a really bad aura. And I tried screaming, but my body would not let me. I was paralyzed and I tried moving, but I could not. I was so scared. The figure just stared at me, and then it disappeared. I wasn't able to move for another few minutes, and when I could, I was terrified and freaked out. I did not even feel my legs. I felt like I was going to pee my pants. I just wanted to curl up in a ball and cry, but I could not. I was too scared to even do that. Eventually, I fell asleep, but couldn't wait to tell my mom about what had happened. She believed me, thankfully. I guess, come to find out that she had a heaping helping of crazy things happen to her too while she was in the same house. From seeing spirits to seeing what she described to me as little imp-like creatures that tried to torture her early in the morning by prodding her with what she tells me as sharp objects. She never specified what she meant by that. I was young, so I didn't know what to do. I started praying that night and the next day, I went to the library and really started reading the Bible. I read it and began to pray a little more. I still prayed and read the Bible like every day for a while, and it definitely seemed to help. I don't want to say I was religious or anything, but I had an understanding of the spirituality of it. I mean, I did have a lot of experiences with spirits and angels from my dreams and meditations. I definitely wasn't as scared as I was before, but... I knew that something just wasn't right. I began practicing yoga and meditation shortly thereafter, and that felt like it was helping. Encounters at that point seemed to really come to a slowdown, and same with my mother. This was all shortly before we saw this physical entity, what I would describe as a gargoyle-like bat creature, and it had a beak and these nasty hideous features, so maybe not that. Part of me believes it was the evil of this house that was allowed to manifest into a physical form to come after me, because I had been doing something right by praying, and I guess it did not like that. Then, fast forward more. After my sighting of this thing and how terrifying it was, I find out my mom had been seeing what she tells me are goblins. They're these hideous little creatures, maybe two to three feet tall, the size of a toddler walking around her room at night. She'll wake up to them, holding her down, trying to have their way with her, biting her, telling her they're going to kill her. Just really horrible stuff. Anyway, we put up with this stuff for about another year, off and on before we finally ended up moving. I remember because it was right at my senior year of high school when we moved out of that house. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. I've always believed that there is good and evil in the world, and I don't believe the devil is always going to be the one to come out the winner. I think God and the angels from the spirit realm are much, much stronger, and I believe if you have enough faith and you're open to the experience, then you can definitely see the other side. I don't think it's something that happens all the time, but I think you can experience it if you want to put the effort in. Now, I don't want to give out the details of the place we moved afterwards because I'm unsure of the location to be exact, but I'll just say this, it was much closer to town.
hi, what lurks beneath? I know this isn't a normal story email that you're so accustomed to getting, but I found this article and I think you can appreciate it. I'm sure if you read it, your viewers can too. Here it is. Encounters with dogmen have been reported for years around the world, but in Scandinavia, they've been chronicled for as long as documented records have been kept. Jens Lechman has studied the dogmen, performing a statistical assessment on newspaper and folklore archives to identify areas where they have been seen. He also looked at ecosystems and demographics in a study intended to prove or falsify the dogmen. By diachronic measurements, sightings have occurred mostly in the fall with numbers peaking in October. The most frequently reported times are around 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. The size of the creatures, according to Lechman, range from 2 to 3 meters, and they are less commonly sighted near water. One distinguishing characteristic that makes the dogmen stand out from a common dog is a prolonged tail, facial features such as pointed ears, and the defining factor of a creature being half man and half dog. However, a lot of it is also behavior. Local lore liken the creature to attack on livestock, horses, cows, and sheep. The local river may have been polluted because of large amounts of blood in the water by locals at one point hundreds of years ago. But the watershed for that river shows a large amount of white-tailed deer activity, giving the dogmen ample food opportunities. The animal most likely to attack livestock would be a stray wolf. Are wolves responsible for these sightings? They are territorial animals. Human activity gives them an even greater sense of urgency. Lechman suggests that human encroachment is of importance when evaluating the behavior of these creatures, and he says this, I ruled out the idea of the dogman is a dog-wolf hybrid. I found it quite odd that these things occurring in the northernmost areas of Sweden, such as dogs being found decapitated. Several hunters reported not seeing deer, even in their designated hunting areas. Other reports of strange footprints in snow have been dismissed as bear trails, even when tracks don't belong to any Russian or polar bear found in Sweden. Lechman suggests that, in some instances, the creature may be more human-like, but he cannot narrow down a specific description. Many creatures described by eyewitness reports could be considered humanoid bipedal animals, which occur quite often throughout history and have even been associated with the paranormal. At least one other researcher suggests it may be more of a problem with misidentification than something paranormal. Cryptozoologist Johan Randwall contested Lechman's claim that these creatures could not be a dog and wolf crossbreed. It's known that animals can become fixed in certain inbred or regionalized structures, like many domestic dogs, but the facts still prove that crossbreeds are not a common thing, and not only must be two species. Coyotes and dogs look more like dogmen than, for instance, a bottlenose dolphin. Considering that forming hybrid species is thousands or even millions of years old, to place a doubt over a well-insured claim doesn't hold much water. Perhaps this serves as a warning if you request people moving to rural areas to not further overpopulate the landscape. Regardless, whether these are really dogmen or not something is occurring in the region for people to be so interested in. I was crossing railroad tracks when I looked up, and I caught my first glimpse ever of a cryptid. It was a wolf, peering through trees on my left. I briefly caught my second visual, this time straight on, of the same creature crouched, looking at me. There was a sudden blur of motion and this wolf was running toward me. I hardly had enough time to think, and so I ran to my left. I turned around, just in time to see this thing running toward me, and this thing was pursuing me hot on two legs the same way an Olympic runner would run directly at you. Unrelenting, I held my breath and dove into a small pond that was right near me, hoping that this would deter this thing from chasing me. I know it sounds strange, but when you're in fight or flight mode, you do some questionable things. This thing stops and hesitates, unsure of what to do next. I stayed below the surface of the pond, trying my best to hold my breath and to not surface. All I could see was the faint outline of this thing just standing there, waiting for me to surface. The thought of what was chasing me two seconds ago 
then not doing anything made me really question my reality. I waited for almost two minutes before I felt my lungs about to burst, and as I came to the surface, this thing was now completely out of sight. After looking around, I couldn't see it, but man oh man, I could feel it. I just felt this heavy presence, this lingering feeling looming in the area, and I knew it had to be close by. I knew if I did not act now, I was getting out of here alive. So I quickly pulled myself to shore and made a break for it. Immediately, I hear this thing bursting out of the bushes and starts pursuing me yet again. I'm really not sure, looking back, why a mere pond and me being submerged in water with it having anything to do with it stopping to chase me. Maybe it knew I was hiding, so it too took the chance to also hide and wait for me. What I can tell you is patience is virtue. I must have been a thorn in its proverbial side. Something made this thing tire of me quickly because it gave up on me as a meal and left. I gave myself a fair distance of space and waited for what seemed to be the right moment to give my legs enough freedom to start running again. I was still tucked in behind a few trees, just trying to catch my breath. It was then that I heard that sound of this wolf's claws pushing against the soil, the thudding of the legs coming towards me. It was coming back again. I knew I could not wait around. I could hear it coming back, unsure of what to do exactly. I peeked out behind a large tree in concealment as this thing was sprinting towards me again, knocking a massive tree down as it went. All I could think of was if it gets any closer. I'm a goner. No one to stand witness but me and the animal's next meal. This thing didn't stop. It was fixated on bringing harm to me and killing me. As it furled down to make another leap, all I could think of was, God, please, let it fall. Leave me be. Those prayers must have been answered as this blur's body fell into a softer overgrown area behind me, in the earth. I turned around to see this creature falling down into this small pit, covered in mulch and pine and tree limbs. Immediately, I began retreating back the way I came. I picked up my pace and did not stop running until I was safely in my car. I could hear this thing screaming and howling the entire way, pissed that it had lost me. Whatever it was, was some unknown creature with an ape-like body shape, connected to the deaths of two people affiliated with the same people connected with the first death of a professor and a student. Someone took pictures of film associated with the deaths. I knew my friend who was working with them back in the woods in 1964. There's something going on, and it's important for somebody to finally find out and really expose what's going on here. I am of high moral standard, and personally, with a deep understanding of the spiritual world. Too much to explain here in a small email, so I'll cut to the chase. This is my eyewitness encounter of this hominid creature. May 6th, 2017. I was finishing my loop around as I was walking home from the market, where I had just finished doing errands. From the corner of my eye, I saw movement in a nearby tree. Upon looking, there was my first great sighting. This humanoid monkey-like creature swung down between the branches, as a fleetless, and then dropped down very quickly, disappearing behind the tree. The creature crouched at first and was swaying side to side, all while staring at me. It appeared weightless, like I said. Once I saw it smoothly sit on the limb, it immediately leapt away and vanished. The drop was fascinating and quick. I don't know if it was followed or chased by something bigger, but I assume it was not alone. There was no repeated sighting, and no real noise accompanied this sighting, so I'm not sure. Another interesting thing, too, was I could see, at least I thought, was another figure at my peripheral on my left as I was walking, too. Once I look over, though, it was always gone. I'm not sure how to describe such a strange creature. However, I do know for me personally, that is something I will never forget. 
I only saw it for a brief moment, and have even questioned myself. But it happened. This was my second encounter up to this point. As a few weeks ago, I experienced something brush past my legs in my sleep, and I felt its physical presence bruise me while in a deep trance-like state. I believe the reoccurring sightings I have of the same type of being or beings is of high spiritual importance. Having this encounter, I have since relocated to Mesa, Arizona back in February, and I'm keeping my eye out for what may be more of these things. I was out camping one evening by a large lake, all by myself. The night was beautiful and it was a serene, quiet evening. All of a sudden, I felt this breeze of extremely cold air and a presence walking up beside me, but I saw nothing. As I feel the presence draw closer, I could hear the noise of heavy breathing. I assumed it was a bear and I turned on my flashlight to look around. I didn't see anything but I could feel something. I could hear breathing, but there was no signs of anything near me. Completely unnerved by this newfound sighting or experience, I sat up and decided it was time to retire to my tent. I quickly jumped in, afraid of what was going to happen. I stayed in my tent the rest of the night, clutching hold of my flashlight and a tiny pocket knife should anything happen. Attempting to calm myself, I distracted myself with thoughts of remembering camping as a child. Then, I heard two loud screeches just outside my tent. Then nothing. Shortly thereafter, I started hearing these loud noises approaching my tent in the night. They sounded large and whatever it was that I was hearing. I was panicking, thinking two really large men were going to come, invade, and kill me. The sounds would stop abruptly just outside my tent, then walk away and return at another angle. Several times this went on. I could hear three separate footsteps and sounds. The whole encounter lasted for several hours. It felt like an eternity. I thought I was going crazy. I just wanted it to stop. There were all sorts of other strange noises. Some of them were screams and growls, while the others were strange stomping noises. Then it would go silent for a moment, and I hear what sounded like a large branch being ripped off a tree right by me. Then, I hear it getting kicked off into the forest. Now, not only was I scared because of what I was experiencing, but I felt like whatever this was is trying to intimidate me and wanting to hurt me. Finally, it stopped, and I could not keep it together. I tried calling out for help, just hoping somebody else was around but I heard nothing but me. I felt as though I was completely helpless and all alone. I knew I was doomed. This had been going on for hours now at this point, and these things were coming back and forth around my campsite. They were always circling my tent. It's like they were waiting for the right moment to strike. You could imagine I was on edge like crazy. And finally, the noises eventually ceased for a period of time. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. They could still be out there watching me, but I was not going to take any chances or risks. I figured that staying put in my tent was the best course of action, at least until sunrise. I waited out the entire night in my tent, completely frozen in fear. Morning eventually came and I had not slept at all. Thoroughly exhausted, I decided to hike my way out as soon as I could. Upon exiting my tent, the area around me was trashed. Huge branches were ripped off the large fir tree, about ten feet away from my tent. My supplies were thrown all over the campsite. Frightened but intrigued, I grabbed my stuff, hit the trail looking for a clear spot where I could escape, because I couldn't exactly remember the section of trail that I had hiked in. I only had the backpack that was salvageable, and of course my tent. Everything else outside was destroyed. Upon getting to my car more than just a mile away, I opened my trunk, put my gear inside. At the time, I had no idea what had happened the night before, but as I'm closing my trunk, getting ready to enter my car, 
I heard this horrific scream off in the distance. It sounded like a man's yell, but really deep and really loud. Like whatever made it had a huge set of lungs. I froze in place, listening for a few seconds. Then, out of nowhere, these strange noises start sounding off all around me. I felt immediate danger, and just like the night before, I realized if I didn't get in my car at that very moment, my life would be in danger. Terrified, I jumped in my car, walked out the doors, and left as fast as I could. Still hearing these noises echoing off in the distance, what did I hear the previous night? What did all of this mean? All I can say is that this experience left me completely overcome with fear, confusion, and amazement. I've never had an experience like that before. I still feel shaken about how such a large creature can move about at night, surround a tent like it did, and scare somebody, yet without ever being seen. There are theories and explanations for what it could have been, but I really have my doubts about most of them. I just don't think everybody has come up yet with a plausible answer. You have to be aware that how loud these were, intimidating and ferocious these things were. Whatever it was, I'm certain it's not a bear. Is, is it possible I encountered a Bigfoot? I was working a late night shift at a meat processing plant. My coworker and friend Sean and I were smoking a cigarette outside on break and just chatting away by our car when we hear something off in the trees right beside the parking lot. It naturally distracts us and we both turn our attention to what we just heard. I mean, it was pretty loud. All we could make out afterwards was a rustling of something big moving and some very faint breathing sounds, like somebody who smoked a pack a day their entire life incredibly raspy. We both give each other glances of puzzlement, figuring somebody was just maybe messing with us or maybe it was a homeless person. It was very weird. I mean, nobody could get in there. There was industrial barbed wire fencing and beyond the fencing was trees. The surrounding area was just thick woods that connected to a national forest, I believe. So, after glancing for maybe five or some more seconds, we're both just like, Huh. and we go back to chit-chatting. Then the next thing you know, we hear this loud crunch of a tree branch, followed by even more rapid deep breathing. We turn our attention again, and this time, we glance towards the side of the trees, and we see a thing. I say thing because I don't know what it was, but it was hunched over, and then stood up to its full height. Sean and I both saw it, and Sean was so shocked he drops his cigarette. This thing was a large hairy creature, and might I add how ugly it was. It also appeared to have a snout, and had deep set in eyes. This thing was well over six feet tall, maybe no more than eight or nine feet. It was pretty tall. It had kind of grayish black fur, and the more we saw its face, the more hideous it was. To better explain what it looked like, Imagine orangutan, or Alf, if you remember Alf. It was like a monkey crossed with a wolf. It was just ugly. It had some more human-like traits, while others were more canine-like. I remember two large rows of pointed teeth. It, too, had a very wide snout. I guess think like Alf, but add some canine features to it, and make it a little bit more scary-looking. It slowly bent down, looked up at us, and stood up right away against the fencing, staring at us. It just glared, and after a couple more moments, it turned away and went back into the trees. I looked at Sean, and he looked at me. He was terrified, and we used this as an opportunity to run back inside and end our break. We told our boss and other co-workers nothing. We finished out our shifts terrified out of our minds that we saw this thing. After work, Sean and I would only talk about it briefly, that we never saw anything like it before and nobody would ever believe us, even if we did tell somebody. We talked to each other once in a while about it, but not really. I mean, we generally don't mention what we saw, and especially to anybody else. We do still hang out on break and talk about things like we normally did, but 
Not like this. I don't think we'll ever be as comfortable as we were. The sighting has kind of changed us. I'm really not sure what we saw that evening. Maybe you could help me out. My daughter, 12 years old at the time, had stayed overnight with me, and we had fallen asleep on the living room couch. We awoke around 7.15 a.m. to see this entity standing by the window. The first thing I noticed immediately was hair hanging down over its face and down the back of its head and neck. It was weird looking. It was covered in nasty matted hair and looked like an ugly dog. It was staring at us. I felt like I was paralyzed and could not get up off the couch. I was petrified to say the least. We had a staring competition for what seemed like forever, and I finally was able to scream. And just before it turned and walked away, my daughter had awakened and seen this thing too. She immediately became hysterical. She runs up to me and collapses on me crying. I phoned the police after it walked away, but they told me there was really nothing they can do about it. Well, a couple of nights later and we had completely forgotten all about the whole thing. My daughter's father had come to come pick her up for the weekend, and as he's getting her into his truck, I hear him start yelling, just as I got back in the house. I go back outside and I see this thing, the same thing we saw last night approaching my now ex-husband and daughter. I froze again and could not get my body into gear. I was so terrified I couldn't even move. My ex-husband pulls out his pistol and fires at it, hitting it in the chest. But the thing never flinched. It just kept coming. Eventually, it turned and began to walk off. He shot at it again in the back. But again, it didn't even flinch. It just walked off, up and over, up a hill. It never even stopped. The man always keeps a firearm on him. And I'm glad he did because who knows what this thing would have done had he not had a weapon. What I can't believe is that he shot it and this thing didn't even react. It was just evil. So he's flipping out, asking me if I saw that. And I start to tell him about how we just saw it at the window the other night. I asked him to follow me up into the house so I could show him with the situation and where I was when we had seen it. I showed him and we exited the house and he goes around and looks and you could see, which I didn't see, but there were impressions in the ground where this thing had been clearly standing. He seemed quite shocked, but at the same time, he seemed like he knew what he'd been seeing that night. There wasn't any feet prints, but you could just see something big and heavy had been standing here right in front of our window. I shudder at the thought that this thing could have been there for a while, watching us sleep before we even awoke to see it. For the next four to five months, we had weird sensations all around the house and property, feeling like we're either not alone or being watched. But to us, we never did see that thing again after that. My ex-husband, after that, always brought around his 44 with him. At that point, every time he came to pick up and drop off our daughter, never did have an experience like that again for the remainder of the time that I lived in that house. This was in May of 1985, and I moved out of that house shortly after, Thanksgiving of the same year. Lately, all of the animals in our neighborhood have started to act strangely. We can attribute these behaviors to none other than supernatural forces. At random times, all of our animals will begin to act strangely, barking, hissing, and acting crazy at the woods surrounding our houses. Our cats recently have gone missing, and so have our small dogs. While some of us believe that it's a pack of coyotes, or something on the loose. I know better. Whatever is there has taken an interest in our pets for reasons still unknown. If this is in fact paranormal, entering an aggressive, directly territorial combat response is illogical, as in nature. Defense-based aggression is rarely the first response. Based on the research, I believe that this is a being that is purposefully waiting for just the right moments to strike. They know, or it knows, how we behave, yet we do not know its behaviors. It's extremely patient, cunning, and intelligent. It's not a coyote, 
fox or wolf. I've seen the wanderings of coyotes, and there appears to be a kind of intelligent guiding in their behavior. Based on emotional interference and drawing from memory, coyotes, even in packs, seem apprehensive when coming into certain territories of neighborhoods due to large populations. We live in areas with a lot of wildlife and birds anyway, so it's very natural to assume that coyote behavior is simple fear of human beings. These cats, though, that are being snatched away and small dogs aren't animals straying far away from populated areas in the neighborhood. They're being snatched up from the yards or back porch. Something is taking them, and nobody is sure what it is. From other experiences alone in the woods, we know it's not your typical animal in nature. This has to be the work of something else entirely. What? I'm not quite sure. Is it possible that this is a dogman or a Bigfoot? Absolutely, since they are usually the ones to be a little bit more aggressive when it's coming in for food and based on stories and other experiences. But at what scale do we really call this a dogman or Squatch? How many animals have to disappear? This has to be something else that we are not experiencing or understanding. What is creepy is that this is going on mostly at night, when everybody's asleep in the early morning hours. That's when these animals are disappearing and nobody is finding a single trace of them. My girlfriend, in fact, asked me one night if I saw movement out in the yard, but I didn't see what she was talking about. She shot up out of bed to look and said she could have sworn she saw a big shadow moving around quickly between yards, but I dismissed her outright. And you know, it's really got me thinking. Maybe there is truth to what she had to say. So far, nobody has found a trace of any animals. No blood trails, no clues, and never any bones. I do think we will find the remains at some point, but who knows? I honestly have no idea. I need help figuring out what is happening in my neighborhood. I live in a very secluded, woodsy part of a small southern town. It's really peaceful during the day, but it gets a little messed up at night. There's a few houses on my road, but for the most part, it's only trees. There are a few reoccurring events that are all pretty spooky, but the one main one is what my friends and I call the Dogman, for the lack of a better name. I've only seen it twice in my life. I have lived in this part of town for three years now. The Dogman has a body shaped like that of a scrawny human. Its bones are very visible. It has fur, but only in patches over its body, sort of like a dog with mange. Though it has the bodily proportions and composition of a person, it has the head of a dog and can run extremely fast. Also, it's huge. It is a quadruped. To preface, my room is at the front of the house. Our front yard is the size of a field. I have the biggest window in the house in my bedroom, and it faces the very front yard. I do not have blinds over my window, and my bed is in front of it. The first time I saw the dogman, it was late at night, and I was sitting in bed. I saw it running through my yard. Shortly after, my cat, who was an indoor-outdoor cat at the time, came inside growling. The cat was found dead across the creek near my yard this very July. He had no visible injuries and was very young and healthy. We still don't know how he died. The second time I saw it, it was earlier tonight. My friend and I were sitting on my porch. We noticed a very large, moving mass on the base of the mountain, which we live right in front of. We decided to get a closer look. My friend stayed behind to watch as my grandfather and I drove down the road to the base of the mountain. I didn't want to drive there alone. As we got near, we stopped in front of the mass. It was a tree. Something then sprinted out from behind it and into the woods to the right of us. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind it was the dogman. If you have any ideas as to what the hell this is, or how I can go about finding more about it, I'd love to hear them. This is really freaking us all out.
Growing up, I lived in northeastern Arizona, literally about five miles south of the Navajo Res in Winslow. Naturally, being that close to the res, skinwalkers were a huge topic of conversation amongst the locals, and we all took it very seriously. Stories of personal experiences abounded. I was no different. Well, to start off my set of stories, I was about eight or nine. My family had gone camping in a little spot about 50 miles or so south of a town called Hart Canyon, near Wiggins Crossing if anyone is interested. We had been there all day, and I was extremely familiar with the area, as we had camped there 20 or so times before. So my parents let me just wander about alone in the woods. This was back in the early 90s. Anyway, I had some G.I. Joes that I had been playing with in the nearby creek, about 80 yards from our campsite. There were not other campers there with us, my mom had called me back to camp for dinner, so I left and ate, played around camp for a while, and realized that I'd forgotten my toys back at the creek. So I took a flashlight and headed back that way. I knew right where I had left them, so in no time, I found them and grabbed them up. As I squatted down to grab them on the edge of the water, a sudden urgency that I'd never felt before ran down my spine. I remember feeling frozen because of the fear, like the little boy on E.T. when the alien comes out of the field for the first time, and he's trying to scream for his family. I looked up and pointed my flashlight to the other side of the creek, and about ten yards down the way, I saw something. At first, I thought it was a deer, but it was standing up, so I thought it might be a bear, but it was too skinny and not enough poofy hair. It skunk behind a tree and peered out slightly at me. I seriously was scared to make the first move. I had just read a bit about Bigfoot for the first time, since it wasn't really popular in my area. I thought for a long time that's what I saw. I finally had seen enough to gather my wits and scram as fast as I could back to camp. I told my parents and they kind of dismissed it as just my imagination. So I just stayed close the rest of the trip. About two years later, I was at my house. I had two dogs, and they were outside dogs, lived their whole lives in my backyard. One night, though, they went psycho, barking at first at something in the alleyway behind my house. Then they both started whimpering. I had my window open slightly, and one of my dogs straight up jumped up to the window and frantically chewed through the screen of the window, forced its way into the house and would not leave the house for three days. Another time when I was about 13, we used to play night games in the town. Mostly, there being nothing much else to do, we would walk around our neighborhood and act suspicious so the cops would come chase us around, and we run down the alleyways and hop into random people's backyards to hide. Now, it was extremely common to see an intoxicated Navajo or other person in the alleyway or even the street, so it was no big deal to see one in the alley behind my house that night, as we, we being two of my friends and myself, ran from a police car hot on our trail. We saw him plain as day standing in our way. We ran around him and jumped into the nearest yard to hide. We waited for the cop to pass us and hopped back out. Literally, about three minutes went by. We ran back the way we came, and as we got to the point to where the Indian had been, he was gone. Legit, in his place was a coyote, sitting there, watching us. We ran right past it, feet from it, and anyone who knows coyotes know they will bail out way before you get close to them. This booger held his ground and calmly sat and watched us run past him. We all freaked out and stayed inside for a month. My last experience was when I was about 15 or 16. My brother has a girlfriend that lived in a small community south of Winslow called Starlight Pines, about 25 miles-ish. Well, we went to go see her one day. 
and as we drove out, about 15 miles out, we saw an Indian guy standing on the side of the road, which was quite odd because the res was north of town and it was rare to see anyone on foot south of town because it's just desert and forest for literally 80 miles. Anyway, we see this guy, he looked normal enough, flannel shirt, jeans. We got to our destination and hung out with my brother's girlfriend and her family well into the night when we decided to head back home. Hopped in his truck, a Chevy S10, and drove back the way we came. In the same spot we saw the Indian dude, he was still there. I remember thinking, that dude is crazy standing out there all day and into the night. What's he doing? Right as we passed him, we hear a loud bang on the back of the truck. At first, I thought we hit an animal, but I hadn't felt anything that we'd run over. I turned around and looked out the back window. My brother started to slow down, thinking there may be something wrong with the truck. In the brake lights, I see the Indian guy chasing after us. We were easily going 55 to 60 at this point as we're about to stop. The guy is in the road, feet behind us. I scream at my brother to not stop. Gun it, man, gun it! He does, and being a Chevy S10, it had a speed governor on it at 80. Two miles. Two miles. This guy keeps up with us the entire way. We are seriously freaking out. I asked my brother, what if we don't make it back to town, or what about it if we have to slow down once we get close? After those two miles that stretched forever, I looked back and he was gone. We got home, booked it into the house, and told our parents. The next morning, I get up and head somewhere and look at my brother's truck, thinking about the night before. I wondered what the loud bang was just before we started getting chased. Inspecting the truck, I found a handprint smeared in the dust from about two-thirds over to the right and then smeared to the right tailgate and tail light. I never went there again. I want to share with this community a story I have not told many people. I have always believed in the paranormal, but after this encounter, it really made me think. So I hope you enjoy, and please, feel free to ask me questions about the matter. I want to hear your opinions and questions. So, I was around 14 years old when this took place. We had just moved to my grandmother's neighborhood, like three weeks prior. I was extremely familiar with this place, as I'd visit them every weekend. Down the road, a bit was a small pond that was in the middle of the next neighborhood over. I would regularly go down there to fish, as my dad's friend owned property on the pond. He had a very nice house with a little gazebo that protruded out into the water, just a little bit. He lived right near the small dam at the end of the lake. The dam was about eight feet high, and on the side that wasn't facing the lake, there was a 50-foot concrete slope that went into the woods below. It was a Friday night in January, and me being the avid fisherman that I was, I was getting ready for a trip down there the next morning. I went to bed kinda early, with my dog and fishing buddy, Angel. She's a Jack Russell, Rat Terrier mix. I'd had her since I was six years old. Man's best friend, for sure. Once we got in bed, I couldn't sleep for some reason. I just tossed and turned. I finally dozed off for about an hour, but woke up for no apparent reason and couldn't go back to sleep. I looked at my phone. It was about 1.30 a.m., and after a short thought, I decided to just go on down to the pond and start fishing. I grabbed my fishing pole, tackle box, my thermos, and we started walking down to the pond. You might think I was crazy for going fishing in 20 degree weather, but I was really into fishing. Besides, I was having great luck fishing down there at night recently, so I had to go push my luck. It was a short walk to get to the lake, but I had to walk around it to the far side where I fished which was another half a mile or so. It was really foggy that night, but I could see pretty well still because it was a full moon, or almost full. It was extremely quiet. 
Usually the road I was walking on is very busy at all hours, but it was too cold for anybody to be out. We made it to my dad's friend's house, and we walked down to the gazebo. I set my things down and take a drink of hot chocolate before I start getting my line ready for the water. Angel found a small place in between the wooden benches to lay down. Now, this next, but may seem unimportant, but just bear with me. Once I got my fishing pole rigged up, I casted it out and sat it down to wait for a bite. My fishing reel has a setting to where if a fish rugs on the line, it makes a very loud clicking noise to let you know that you have a bite. That's the setting I put it to. I sit down and take a look around. It was about 2.30 a.m. at this point. I look over to the left at the houses. I look over to the right towards the dam, which was about 40 feet from where I was. It still is very quiet, and I continue to look around the area, just taking in the moonlit water. Then suddenly, I see something out of the corner of my eye to my right. There, by the dam, I see a white blob walking on all fours, looking as if it's smelling the ground. It looked like a white dog from where I was, and I didn't want Angel to see it, so I picked her leash and I kept an eye on that thing. At this point, I still thought it was a dog, and I wasn't scared in the least bit. But then, as it made its way to the wall of the dam, it stood up on two legs. Then I realized that this was no dog. I crouched down beside the wooden bench where Angel was laying, grabbed her up and faced her away from the creature. The thing didn't see me, and I was going to do my damnedest to make sure it never did. I intensively watched as it looked around the area, and then proceeded to jump up onto the eight-foot-tall dam effortlessly, almost as if it floated. Then it did something very strange. Its pale white skin started glowing, almost like a firefly. I could see the bluish colored veins in its back and calf muscles, and this thoroughly freaked me out. Then it turned around to where I could see its face. It was about three and a half feet tall, had a short torso, long skinny legs and arms, a wide head, almost oval shaped, large ears, a large mouth with many small teeth and huge eyes that were yellowish orange in color. On top of that, it was kind of glowing. I was nearly hyperventilating, trying to control my breathing, hoping the thing wouldn't hear me. Angel was now aware of its presence, and the hair on her neck stood up as she started growling and struggling to get out of my arms. I kept watching it, terrified to move. It didn't do anything when it got up to the top of the dam. It just squatted down and looked as though it was examining something in its hands. After a few minutes of watching it, I'd worked up the idea to just go back the way I came, and once I got to the road, just run as fast as I can home. Angel was growing increasingly aggressive and trying to see the creature, but I kept her buried in my big winter jacket the best I could. I decided to just leave my stuff there and come back to get it the next day. I slowly stood up, and just as I was about to start walking away from the gazebo, my fishing pole started making a very loud zzzz sound. Of all the times, now I get a fish to bite. My attention went straight back to the creature, which was now frantically looking around for the source of the noise. In my panic, I forgot to keep Angel covered up, and she saw the creature for the first time. She started barking like I'd never heard her bark before, as if she was in terror or something, and that scared me. The creature then saw us there, and it bent down as if it were about to start running towards us. I tried to take a step back and start running, but I slipped on the cold hard ground. I landed on my side and looked at the creature. Thankfully, it hadn't started to chase us, but it let out the most disturbing scream I've ever heard. It sounded like a woman screaming, but backwards if that makes sense. It then jumped from the dam into the woods, about a hundred feet away, and faded as it landed. I was in tears now, and my fight or flight kicked in. I grabbed Angel, and I ran as fast as I could, all the way up to my door at my house. 
too afraid to look back and see if it was behind me. I got home and I don't really remember what happened till the next day. I must have passed out or something. I remember it seemed like it was a dream, but the next day I went to go get my gear from the gazebo. It was still there. I didn't go back to the pond, even during the day, for a few years. I told my mom and dad the story, some months later, and while they believe me, I still wonder what the creature was. I think I've had an experience, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Me and my friend were walking towards a park to go and hang out at, and then we discovered the sewer system. We decided to check it out, because we were stupid. There was a grate covering it, but the bars were bent open enough that me and her could squeeze in. She had a really bad feeling about it. She's a super intuitive person when it comes to paranormal stuff, but I just ignored it and went further in. There was a big room area that the grate led into, and it had a grate on the top where a light was shining through. There was a big tunnel leading right, and a small tunnel leading up high that I couldn't reach on the left. The room was partially filled with water at the bottom, and there was some graffiti on the walls of the tunnel. As I looked to the left, it was super dark, so I couldn't see very well. But a long ways down, there was another grate, and there was some light leaking in. I could see a long, lanky thing stretched out that looked really like a skinny arm. I couldn't see a body because it was further, closer to me, where it was darker, and I could only see it because it was in front of the light, so it was shining behind it and made it pop out. Sorry if this was worded weird. I don't know how else to describe it. It looked like an arm stretched out, and it wasn't moving. I ignored it, thinking it was probably just a plank of wood or something propped up because there were some planks of wood in the room that I was in. I decided to stack some rocks by the left tunnel so that I could reach it and look in. As I looked through the tunnel, there was another room far down the tunnel, and it had a grate on top like my room and light was leaking in. Then, I noticed this gray, hunched-over figure with an extremely bony body. It didn't have any clothes or hair from what I could see. Its body looked super malnourished. I couldn't see its head or its legs since the tunnel was really small. All I could really see was its back, part of its neck, and the tops of his arms. It also wasn't moving, and by this point, I was freaking out. I went back to my friend and told her what I saw. I asked her for her phone so I could take a picture to show her. She refused to go into there. I took the picture and then we hightailed it out. I sadly don't have the picture because the phone it was taken on had gotten lost. We have gone back a couple of times but never saw anything like it since. The tunnels were just empty. I think the figure was either a crawler or maybe a gray. If anyone has any information on grays or crawlers, please comment below. I can't find much about them. Sorry if this is badly worded. It's super late. If anyone needs me to elaborate on something, I'd be happy to do so. Anyone have any idea what it was or have anything similar happen to them? There is something haunting the woods of Mount Shasta. I don't know what it is, but I think I've seen it twice. Before I moved to Mount Shasta, I heard all of the strange stories about the area. Weird disappearances, underground alien bases, UFOs, Bigfoots, creatures. But I didn't take them seriously. I was living in the suburbs, which was as far away from anything strange as somebody can get. It's just not something you went around thinking about. All the time. I lived in Mount Shasta for a couple of years before I really saw anything like the kinds of stories people tell here. Almost everyone you meet will talk about something they've seen after you get to know them a little. A couple of miles from town is a lake, Siskiyou. There's miles of trails and shoreline to hike along and swim, surrounded by hills and forests. I hope what I'm able to admit doesn't make me sound less believable but I've used marijuana occasionally since high school. 
and at the time this happened, I was using it medically to help with some medical issues. It's legal in California and not really a big deal. Most people are okay about it. To make a long story short, I wanted to grow a couple of plants on my own, so I bought some seedlings, and I went searching around in some areas of the forest in the back of Lake Siskiyou, where a series of creeks flow into it. I was trying to find a place near a water source where I could buy some plant seeds that had a lot of shrubbery and tree cover so the plants would be hidden. This wasn't a big operation. I just wanted a few plants for my own use. We were renting a place and I didn't have any property to grow on, so it seemed like a harmless thing to do. You can understand it's partially because of this that I'm being very careful about remaining unknown. Technically, I could get in some trouble for this. It was getting near the end of summer and me and a friend camped out in the woods behind the lake. Before dark, we took the trail to the north shore of the lake and walked up into the forest where we set up a tent in a wooded area close to where my plants were and slowly growing. We were trying to be very quiet and didn't use any lights because it's illegal to camp here overnight. It was around midnight when we decided to go to the lake's north shore for a swim because it was too hot to fall asleep, of course. We were walking on the trail back to the lake. It was dark and felt humid. And as we continued down the path, we passed through a grassy area and there was a mist hanging over this area at about three or four feet off the ground. But just this one area, nowhere else. I remember my friend saying something about it because it seemed so unusual to her. A little further ahead, something crashed high up in the trees above us. We were both startled by the sound of branches splitting and breaking. Whatever it was made quite a bit of noise, like something scrambling to hide. It scared the hell out of both of us. When I turned around and looked up, I saw two large glowing yellow eyes looking down from high up in the tree, but the rest of its form was hidden in the branches. It only looked down for a moment and it must have turned away because its shining eyes were gone a moment later. Then there was another crashing in the limbs, like something suddenly jumping or falling, breaking more branches, but nothing hit the ground. My friend wasn't looking up when this happened. She was looking directly behind us, but she heard it and turned around. As the second crashing happened, the tree limbs high up shook, causing broken branches and limbs to fall, but nothing large like an animal hit the ground, only falling debris. It freaked us out, so we both ran and got out of there. After we were further down the trail, I told her it was probably a bear or mountain lion climbing up the tree and we must have scared it. But I couldn't forget how large its eyes must have been for me to have been able to see them shining so brightly from high up in that tree and the weird mist that was only in that grassy area. It bothered me, but I didn't want to say anything more about it because I didn't want to freak out my friend for the rest of the night. It was probably about an hour later after we went swimming on the north shore that we saw something again. We were both sitting on the sand having a smoke and from behind us we both heard a sound like huge wings flapping coming from the forested area behind us where a series of creeks run down a rocky drainage and flow into the back side of the lake. We both turned around at the same time and saw this large black bat like form soar directly over us soaring at about the same height as the tallest trees. It crossed over the lake and then veered off towards the south where it disappeared from view. The creature looked like a flying humanoid with bat-like wings, about the size of a tall man. It was far too big to be any kind of owl or bird and we were both so freaked out that we didn't go back into the woods again that night. We just went back to the main campground adjacent to the lake and got in our car and drove home. I returned the next day with a friend to get our tent that we left. My girlfriend didn't want to go back there. I looked around the area to see if there were any tracks or something, remembering that someone had told me that a long time ago 
there were reported in the local newspaper to be three-toed tracks up on the Mount Shasta, but I couldn't find anything that looked out of the ordinary, and I've never seen anything like that since. But we don't go camping out in remote places around the mountain anymore. I never knew how widespread the sightings of these flying creatures were until after this happened to me, and I started researching it online. That's how I found out that there is some truth to the strange things people claim to see around Mount Shasta. Okay, so I'm a 16 year old male and I live in the suburbs on the east coast in a town with a population of about 25,000 people. It was a normal night a couple years ago. I don't remember exactly what I was doing that night except that I was on my way home when this happened. I was in the car with my dad and my little brother. My dad is an alcoholic and used to verbally and physically abuse my whole family and as much as I'd love to divulge into the horror of my upbringing. This is the only detail relevant because even though my father is now sober, I'm still very uncomfortable around him. But my little brother was too young to remember much from when he was abusive and is much closer with him now. So, when we ride in the car, my brother sits in the front with my dad talking about whatever and I sit in the back listening to music with my headphones falling into my own thoughts while staring out the window. This night, while I was on my way home, was no different. I remember we were almost back, maybe about five minutes away, and we were coming up on passing a church, and I got immediate goosebumps when I laid my eyes on it. Then, I was rushed into an overwhelming feeling of terror and couldn't look away from the church as we grew nearer and nearer, fearing something bad would happen if I did. Now I listen to horror story narrations, read all kinds of things on Reddit, love horror movies, go to every haunted house in my area, and spend lots of time outside late at night when the weather permits it, going to the woods and abandoned places with my friends. So this unexpected feeling of terror on a completely normal night, surrounded by what I knew as the safe place I grew up in was very unusual. As we get closer to the church, I see two deer in front of its lawn. One is lying on its side and the other is standing and it has its head bent towards the other's stomach. The deer on its side is dead and the other deer has giant black horns that looked similar to the ones in the Marvel movie Thor Ragnarok. They were absolutely massive and it looked like the deer shouldn't have been able to support their weight. I am frozen in fear when I realize the one is standing up is devouring the dead one and as we passed by it, it looked up at me, straight in the eyes. It felt cold and angry, and I knew any intentions this thing had were, obviously, malicious. This is weird, but locking eyes with it almost made me feel like it knew me, like it stared into my soul and explored every nook and cranny in my brain. Thinking about that feeling still sends a shiver down my spine, because it was so unnatural, uncomfortable, and terrifying but you could say that to describe everything about this creature. The skin had begun to rot off its face, and I could see part of its skull. It had sharp, shiny teeth and was covered in blood. My father and brother didn't notice anything, and I thought maybe I was seeing things. But that primal fear convinced me it was real, because I've never felt any kind of fear as real as what this felt like. I was truly scared for my life. In those few moments passing by, this thing I could feel its rage, it was almost tangible, and it felt awful. I knew that it wanted to kill anything or anyone, and it would do anything for the satisfaction. I believe me noticing its presence made me on its next immediate target list, which would explain why I was the only one affected by its presence. My father and brother both unalarmed enough to not even notice it. But thank God I was in the car when we passed it that night. The night went on as usual. 
I couldn't stop thinking about it though. So I went to the church the next day early in the morning and found the dead deer. All of its fur was skinned off and it had a huge hole in it. Upon looking inside, I saw that its body was completely hollow. No blood, no organs, nothing. But it wasn't flat. It looks like everything was still intact, that it just died and had no fur. It was gone before the day was over. I still have no idea what happened that night, but I haven't seen anything similar since this, and I don't know if it was a skinwalker or not. All I know is it scared the hell out of me, and I hope to never see anything like it again. Okay, so I was about 14 at the time, and I grew up pretty poor. My mother at this time was really slowly disappearing from my life, and where I was later on homeless. But at this time, she was still around, and we were sleeping on the kitchen floor, as it was the comfiest floor in the house. I regularly get night terrors and sleep paralysis, but this time it felt different. I woke up immediately, feeling like I was being watched. I found it hard to breathe. I was just so terrified. Everything in my mind told me to not open my eyes, but being as curious as I am, I opened them anyway. What I saw I'll never forget. I saw this creature. It looked to be about seven feet tall, but somehow fit into our small apartment hallway. Its bones were all deformed and broken, but it didn't look like it was in any pain. At this point, I had sat up and started to move backwards, away from this thing. It was all white and didn't have hair anywhere. There was something draining from its mouth when it would move nearer to me. I could hear this thing's bone cracking. I closed my eyes, hoping it would go away, but I could still hear it. I started actually screaming, and my mother woke up and yelled at me for my screaming, but I told her what was happening, and when I opened my eyes, it was gone. My mother continues to insist I'm lying, but I swear what I saw that night was real, and it wasn't human. My name's Cody, and I'd been a paramedic about five years at the point that this story takes place. I originally joined the department to be a fireman, but after about a year, I'd realized that being a paramedic full-time was more enjoyable to me, and after discussion with my captain and a butt load of training, he agreed I could stay a paramedic as long as there were no manpower shortages elsewhere. Since then, I've spent every working day on a bus doing the best job in the world, at least in my opinion. However, you're not reading this to hear my life story. Instead, you're here to read about one of the most horrific things I've ever seen on my job. The night it happened had been just like any other. There are occasional shifts where everything seems to go haywire, but those are rare, and we hadn't experienced one in quite some time. My normal shift was days, but I had been switched to nights after one of the old timers had retired. Fortunately, I was riding with one of the only two guys I could stand. The rest of our crew was filled with jacked up jocks and drama queens. That night I was working with Donald, probably the funniest guy in the department and my favorite guy to work with. Our first call of the night was a GSW in a rougher part of town. We arrived before the PD and since our protocol was to never enter an active shooting situation, we were forced to sit and wait for them to arrive and clear the scene. After a very long 15 minutes, we were finally allowed to enter the apartment where the shooting had taken place. And, just as we had feared, the victim was already dead. And yes, I am aware that I started a paragraph saying this night was like any other. Unfortunately, things such as this are all too common in my city. Despite the rough start to the night, the calls that took place in the following few hours went far better. We managed to stabilize this poor little boy that was having an asthma attack. These things are often made worse by stressful situations and the boy's mother was doing the poor kid no favors. Once we were able to get him alone in the bus, he responded much better to treatment. By the time we had arrived at the ER, 
the attack was all but over. That call was probably the highlight of the shift. Patients like that are the main reason I love my job so much. Helping others at times when they need it most gives me a supreme sense of achievement. There aren't many jobs that can do that for you anymore. The remainder of the calls that night went smoothly. Mainly trip and falls and minor fender benders. All of them except the last. Stuff was winding down and we only had about an hour left. I was writing shotgun and going through the run sheets and double checking them. We had just dropped off a drunk college girl that had been hit by a car full of more drunken college girls. None of the injuries were a big deal. After checking out all those involved in the incident, the driver and her passengers checked out fine and the girl that was hit was left with appeared to be just a sprained ankle. Of course, the girl driving got to spend the night in jail. On the way out of the hospital parking lot, we received a call to meet the police department at the address of an elderly person for a wellness check. Generally, we didn't accompany the police on wellness checks, but since the citizen involved was diabetic and had a heart condition, we had been asked to tag along. Those of you reading this that are unaware of what a wellness check is, the police receive a call from a family member or a neighbor requesting the police to check on somebody to ascertain their situation. Basically, they ask the police to make sure their loved one is doing okay, living or not a danger to themselves, that kind of stuff. Anyway, we met the two officers outside the subject's apartment, who, in this case, was a 77-year-old widow who lived alone with an army of cats. As we stood outside the door waiting for somebody to open it, the faint smell of decomposition hung strong in the air of the cramped hallway. If the fact she didn't answer the door after a five solid minutes of knocking was about enough, the smell of a decomposing body confirmed our darkest suspicions. Once the handyman returned with a key and let us in the apartment, the officers entered to secure the scene and determine the status of the subject of the check. In a matter of seconds, the younger of the two officers stormed back out into the hallway, retching uncontrollably. Donald and I shared a look of bewilderment. It had been quite a long time since I remember seeing a cop getting sick at a scene. I figured it had to be very bad in there, and I wasn't wrong. The second officer came out a few seconds later holding a handkerchief over his face and gave us the okay wave with his head. One step into the door, I was hit with an overbearing stench of cat pee, the universal perfume of the crazy cat lady. The smell came close to overpowering the decomposition, and the combination of the two made me a bit queasy. Donald went ahead of me while I put my bag down to dig out my flashlight. About that time, a cat zipped between my legs and out the door. I could only shake my head and hope I never ended up like this poor woman. I noticed Donald standing ahead of me, looking down at something with a horrified look on his face. A couch blocked whatever it was, but I could only assume it was the DB of the lady. His look did surprise me, considering we had both seen more than our share of corpses, and some of those had been beyond gnarly. I heard him mumble the words, Dude, nasty, under his breath, and that only managed to make me even more curious. Just looked up at me and said, You gotta see, and turned around and walked out of the room. He was shook in a way I'd never seen him, and I wasn't sure I wanted to see it, but that was my job, so with a knot in my stomach, I walked down the hall and into the living area. When I walked past the couch, I slowly looked down and saw the most horrible sight I have ever and hope will ever see again. I reluctantly pulled out my flashlight and shone it down on her so I could get a clearer look in the dark room. Her body had that deflated look an almost black color that corpses take on once they reached advanced decomposition. But that wasn't the bad part. From what I could tell, her face had been chewed up and eaten, but what I can only guess were the cats. She must have been dead for at least two or three weeks, and I assume when the cats ran out of food, they turned to the next option, her dead body. 
While I was crouched over her, I couldn't help but feel like I was being watched. I stood up, stifling the taste of bile seeping into my mouth, and turned to look for what was causing it. As I scanned the dark room with my light, what seemed like hundreds of little red eyes peered back at me from dark corners under furniture. A chill slowly passed through me, and I ran from the room back into the hall to call the coroner and animal control. Me and Donald stood in the hall with the two officers. We all shared a few shocked looks, but nothing was said until the coroner showed up. We made sure to warn him and his assistant about the state of her face, but unless you saw it for yourself, no one could really understand how horrid it looked. The two of them came out of the apartment just a few moments later, rolling her body on a gurney, and thank God it was in a bag. I just wasn't ready to see that again. All I can say is, I hope that poor lady was dead when those furry little monsters attacked her. Donald and I followed the coroner to his van, and once her body was loaded, I asked him point blank what he thought had happened. He looked me in the face almost nonchalantly. As far as I can tell, she had a cardiac event and was probably fed on by the cats. Her body's been in that apartment for at least a month, maybe longer considering it's winter and the heat wasn't on. The poor little things got hungry, and she was the only thing left to eat. The last thing I saw, those horrid creatures as were poor little things. He continued by saying that this was not his first time to come across something like this, and added that there had been a big story in the UK where something very similar had happened just recently. We pulled away from the scene about the time animal control showed up. I certainly did not envy those guys. From what I heard later, they spent the rest of the night in that cramped little place and ended up coming out there with 22 full-grown cats and a litter of kittens. I never found out if any of those little monsters were ever adopted out, but I know for sure I'll never let my kids bring home one, no matter how much they beg me. Hello. I'm a 21-year-old guy from Denmark. Back in 2017, I was going for a vacation road trip in the US. We started off in Las Vegas, where my mom visited and an old woman she lived with for a year, back when she was 16 and an exchange student. We then drove to LA, then Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and finally, Louisiana. I am, and I was very into true scary stories, especially enjoy cryptid and unexplained creatures and skinwalkers and wendigos, and I told my family about it. But my sister and her boyfriend teased me about believing in such nonsense. My dad doesn't believe in God or superstitions or anything, but has some strange things that have happened to him, so he is a little more open-minded, which my mom also, because she have experienced paranormal stuff. When we were driving through the deserts of Arizona, my dad had to have a smoke and we wanted to stretch our legs. We got out of the car and my dad started smoking and we looked around. Then suddenly my sister says, what is that? And pointed towards the desert where we immediately noticed a lion sized, totally black cat. Like it was so black that it absorbed the light. It was just walking. It had a really long and thick tail and it walked so freaking weird, like it was a robot, just totally stiff legs. Then it noticed us and just froze and turned its head really fast and just stared. Then I turned its body without moving its head and started walking our direction. Then I said that we should probably get in the car and get moving because I wasn't staying around for it to reach us. My family quickly agreed and we hurried to get in the car and take off. For the rest of the trip, my sister's boyfriend and my sister didn't tease me about any unexplainable creatures anymore. We were really agitated by this thing. I started googling and searching about animals that live in Arizona, and I couldn't find anything about a big-ass feline that was black anywhere in the world. The only big cats I could find were jaguars, and it's rare they get black and not that black. It was also much larger than a jaguar. And jaguars, cougars, and mountain lions live in forested areas, and definitely not in the middle of dirt or cacti. I still think about this a lot, 
and I've never found an answer to what this exactly was. And I believe even more now that there are creatures of this world we don't know about. February 15th. I was walking back home after hanging out with some friends of mine. Before anyone asks me, I was completely sober and in my right mind. I have never been afraid to walk alone in the dark. I'm quite tall and intimidating looking from a distance and I always bring a pocket knife when I know I'll be walking alone in the dark. Anyway, I was walking past some woods on the way back to my house and I heard my mother's voice call. Gabriel, help! From inside the woods. I immediately recognized her voice and turned to look into the woods. She kept calling my name, over and over, but I couldn't see anything. It was far too dark to see through the trees. Mom! I called back, heading towards the woods. She sounded like she was in trouble and scared. I assumed that she had gone for a run like she did every night and somehow got lost in the woods. Then I realized it couldn't be her. She had texted me only 10 minutes before, asking me to come home soon to watch my little sister so she could go on a run. I stopped dead in my tracks and called my mom. The voice in the woods still calling my name and getting more frantic by the second. She picked up and I immediately asked her if she was in the woods. She said no. She was back home with my little sister. I swear to God, as soon as she said she was back home, her voice stopped calling my name from inside the woods. I was overcome with a wave of dread and fear that I had never felt before. Something in the woods was trying to lure me in, using my mother's voice, and it knew my full name, not just my nickname, which made things even scarier because the only person who calls me Gabriel is my mother. I immediately turned and ran faster than I have ever ran before back home. When I got back home, my legs felt like jello and my legs burnt. I opened the door and there was my mom sitting on the couch with my sister. I would think this is some sort of prank, but my mom isn't one for pranks. And even if she was, there's no way she could have gotten home before me without me seeing her. Hello, I am a male in my early 20s and I live in South Dakota and I am an experienced Wiccan. I haven't had too many bad experiences, but there is one I can remember. There was one ritual I was wanting to try, but I need more than just me to perform it. So I invited one of my friends to help me with it because I knew she had been wanting to learn a little bit more from somebody experienced. Just for reference, my friend was a couple years younger than me, and she was a small, patient girl with colored short hair. So, I set up a night at a local lake to perform this ritual. And I want to point out that this ritual wasn't exactly a good magic type of ritual. It wasn't dark magic by any means, but more of an in-between type of magic. So, me and my friend set up a night and met at the location we had discussed. I told her what to expect and what to do. I told her that she had to do everything that I explained, or that the ritual was for nothing. So she agreed, and we began the ritual. I started by lighting a small fire, and set my makeshift cauldron into the center of it. I threw the first few ingredients into the cauldron, and we started. The first quarter of our ceremony went by pretty quickly, and then I heard a bush behind me moving and I thought it was just a small creature moving on by. So I ignored it, and we reached about halfway through the ceremony, and I heard a louder sound like branch snapping, so I was a little more nervous about my surroundings and who or what was possibly watching us. After the second interruption, I kind of sped up the process and tried to get our ritual done. After the next hour or so, I kept hearing whispers behind me, and off in the distance in the dark in front of me. At this point, my friend was starting to hear things too, and she was starting to get uncomfortable, since she wasn't as comfortable with everything as I was I let her just sit in front of the fire with me behind her. As she was reading out of my book of shadows, 
I felt someone watching us, so I told my friend to add three decent-sized logs to the fire to try to make it easier to see. After a few minutes, the logs finally caught on fire and lit up about 50 more yards around us, revealing a tall, slender figure just on the outside of the light of our fire. Just as I noticed the figure, so did my friend. She began shaking and she called my name without moving. She asked, what do we do? I told her, don't move. All we have to do is say a short invocation, close the book and put out the fire. By then, the figure had glowing red eyes and I could finally see a ragged black cloak draped over the figure with long slender arms that were nothing but bone. Before it had the chance to move, I shouted the final words of the invocation and closed the ritual circle. My friend slammed the book shut and I kicked sand onto the fire, extinguishing the flames. Just as the flames went out, the creature made an ear-piercing screech that seemed like it shook the whole ground. My friend was lying on the ground, covering her ears, starting to cry. I picked her up and booked it for my vehicle that was parked about 200 yards behind us, hidden behind a large row of trees. As soon as I got to my car, I threw open the driver's side door and put my friend in on the bench seat and slid her over to the passenger side. I got in, slammed the door shut. I started my vehicle and I floored it out of the trees that we were in. But just as we got into the clearing, on the outside of the trees, the figure was floating there, about a hundred yards in front of my vehicle. I didn't move. I looked over at my friend, and she was still curled up in a ball crying. I didn't want this thing to hurt her, so I looked back at it, and as soon as it did, it made the same defining scream. I put my car in a first gear and floored the gas pedal to get out of there. I didn't care if I hit it, I just wanted to leave. But just as I was about to hit it, it vanished into the fog. I didn't look back, I just kept driving. We had about five miles before we hit pavement and were able to drive faster. It was about another 25 minutes back in the town and on the way back, my friend never said a word. I asked her if she was okay and she just looked at me. By the time we got back into town, my friend did admit that she knew why everything happened. Apparently, her ex-boyfriend had gone to some voodoo doctor, asking him to set a dark spirit to hurt or even kill her because he was jealous of her spending so much time with me. At the end of all of this, she did become my girlfriend and we haven't tried any new rituals for quite some time now.